Hello, grade 11s. Welcome to Educate. Let us talk about glomerular filtration today under the topic of excretion in human beings. <coughs> so, recapping, remember that um, the nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. This just simply means that uh, the nephron is the one that actually carries out the functions of the kidney. So, it is a functional unit. It's just a small, small, small unit of a kidney whereby uh, the blood is filtered, meaning that the waste products that are in the blood are removed and then they will be excreted as urine so that the blood can be clean. So now uh, the nephron remember that it is divided into two parts which is the malpighian body as well as the renal tubule. So we have covered this in our previous two videos about the nephron um, that have explained the malpighian body structure uh, as well as um, the labels associated with the nephron. <coughs> so now uh, the blood that contains waste products enters the Bowman's capsule to be filtered at the glomerulus. So this is just a rewind that I uh, remember that the, the blood that is um, that is that contains waste products it enters the Bowman's capsule, this whole cup-like structure, and then it will be filtered here at the glomerulus at this coiled structure here, the glomerulus. And then this process will be called the glomerular filtration. So glomerular filtration is whereby the blood is filtered at the glomerulus, meaning that the waste products that are in the blood will be filtered into this uh, into this uh, bom into this Bowman's capsule. You can just see here from the image that we have that um, the waste products actually moving out of the blood and then they'll be moving at the proximal convoluted tubule. So in this video, we're going to look at... Um, step by step at how that happens and what are the adaptations of the Bowman's capsule what makes ultrafiltration or glomerular filtration possible so now <clears throat> another name for glomerular filtration is ultra filtration so whenever you see ultra filtration and glomerular filtration they are still re uh, referring to the same thing which is the filtration of the blood at the glomerulus so now first thing the blood that will enter the afferent arteriole will be filtered here, then the waste products will be moving. I want to emphasize this point such that we know what actually is going on here. So now uh, the first adaptations of the Malpighian body is just the afferent arteriole is wider than the efferent arteriole. So this uh, arteriole, this afferent arteriole that brings in dirty blood or the blood that has got waste products is wider um, it is wider or it is more open than the what than the efferent arteriole. So now remember that uh, when you have got something like this, let's just say this is a hose pipe. Yeah, this is a hose pipe with water flowing in it. This is just a water pipe, and then it becomes narrower and narrower. What will happen to the water? If you can see the water here at this point, it will be flowing faster. Um, it will be flowing slowly, but then when it is flowing in a smaller area, it will be under pressure, it will be uh, flowing faster. So the same analogy applies here at the filtration thing. So because the afferent uh, arteriole is wider than the efferent arteriole, the blood that will enter here into the glomerulus will be put under pressure. So the blood will be put under pressure, forcing the plasma with dissolved substances into the Bowman's capsule. That is the whole aim for this uh, filtration process. It is for the what? It is for the dissolved waste products to move away from the blood and get into the what? Into the Bowman's capsule. And then eventually it will be made to be urine at some point. So now at this point, the blood will be put under pressure, meaning that the blood will be flowing so fast here at the glomerulus such that uh, the the dissolved substances, the dissolved waste products will be leaking or they'll be moving away from the blood and into the Bowman's capsule, into this uh, capsular space. They can say capsular space or the Bowman's capsule. They are still referring to this space here uh, where the waste products or the smaller dissolved waste products will move to. So that is the advantage for the difference in the diameter of the afferent arterial. So remember the example that when water is flowing in a wider area it is flowing slowly and it has got less pressure but when it is flowing over a smaller area it has got high pressure same applies to the blood at the afferent arteriole it has got low pressure but then because the efferent arteriole is narrower than the afferent arteriole it will 
it will eventually result in the blood being put under a lot of pressure and when the blood is flowing so fast here at the glomerulus then the waste products or the smaller dissolved substances will be leaking into the Bowman's capsule. That's the first adaptation of the Malpighian body. Then the second adaptation of the Malpighian body is that um, the walls of the glomerulus are thin because they have got only one layer of squamous epithelium. So the glomerulus, let me just try to reconstruct it. So reconstructing the glomerulus, it will be something like this. Um, let me just get rid of this and this and this. So now let's try to reconstruct the glomerulus so that I can illustrate. So now um, the glomerulus, remember, let's just say this is your afferent arterial. And then this is the glomerulus. This is the glomerulus inside the Bowman's capsule and then this will be your efferent arterial. So the blood is moving into the afferent arterial and then it will be leaving the efferent arterial. So this is your glomerulus. So this glomerulus, it is said it, uh, it has got walls that are only uh, one layer of squamous epithelium. They are thin walls. So the thin walls here, you can see that the glomerulus here at the walls of the glomerulus they are very thin they are not thick so it makes it easy for the smaller dissolved waste products to move away from the blood in the glomerulus and to get inside the bowman's capsule let me just put my bowman's capsule here like this so here you can see that here because um the the the, the, the walls of the glomerulus are thin it makes it easy for the smaller dissolved waste products or the smaller dissolved substances to leave or to move away from the blood in the glomerulus and into the what? Into the Bowman's capsule. So this is an adaptation as well. The walls of the glomerulus are thin. They are only one layer of squamous epithelium. This, uh, this outer layer of the glomerulus, we say it is known as the squamous epithelium. So this together with protocytes will make ultrafiltration to be possible. So protocytes, they are referring to just these cells. I don't know, is it a fat tissue or what? But then these are the just cells that are around the glomerulus. So the cells around the glomerulus, let's just say these are our protocytes. These are the protocytes here. So the protocytes are also thin as well as the walls of the glomerulus. So it makes it easy for the, uh, for, for the smaller dissolved waste products to leave the blood and uh, move out into the Bowman's capsule. And eventually they will go there at the proximal convoluted tubule and then they will be made to be urine at some point. So now this is an adaptation as well. And then uh, the third adaptation of the Malpighian body is that only the smaller dissolved substances will live through the slits between the protocytes whereas the larger proteins will remain in the blood. Remember the whole aim for this ultra filtration process or, or this glomerular filtration process it is to get rid of the waste from the uh, from the blood. As we have said that the blood that enters the afferent arterial contains a lot of waste products and then those waste products for them to leave they need to be filtered at the glomerulus. They need to be filtered. So our aim is to filter the waste. Our aim is to remove the waste from the blood. So the advantage is that uh, only the smaller dissolved substances are able to live here at the what? At the protocytes. Only the what? Only the smaller dissolved substances. The larger proteins cannot live through these, uh, these holes at the protocytes because uh, they are large, right? And remember, the larger proteins are, the, are needed by your blood or they are needed by your body. So we don't need to get rid of them. Our main aim for this process is to get rid of the smaller dissolved waste products, right? So smaller dissolved waste products. So here at this point, um, because, the, because the slits are very, very, very small, the larger proteins will remain in the blood. So that's an advantage because our aim is to take away the waste that is small and leave the large proteins in the blood. So now uh, the fourth uh, uh, adaptation of the glomerulus for, for this process is that the Bowman's capsule is cup-shaped. So uh, the Bowman's capsule is cup-shaped. You can see that uh, this is the Bowman's capsule. You can see by this label, this is the whole, this whole um, section this, that looks like a cup. If you can reconstruct, this is just something like this. This is your Bowman's capsule. It's a cup-like structure. So the Bowman's capsule is uh, is cup-shaped. 
enabling a large contact area with the glomerulus. So now when we are saying that it is cup shaped, it means that it has got a lot of space inside it. So it has got a lot of space inside it so that the glomerulus can, can do this process efficiently. That's what they are trying to say here. Uh, so since there is filtration of the blood here at the glomerulus, right, there is filtration of the blood at the glomerulus, uh, be, because the Bowman's capsule is cup shaped, it enables uh, enough space or a large area of contact with the glomerulus. So it enables a large area so that um, so that the dissolved, uh, the smaller dissolved waste products can live from the what can live from the blood. So remember when you're answering these questions, there are usually two marks, and you need to mention um, a point and give you the reason. It's sort of like a cause and effect. So in this case, um, when you're saying adaptations of the Malpighian body, we are trying to explain what makes the Malpighian body suitable for the process of glomerular filtration. What what makes you to be able to hear what I'm saying is because you've got ears, right? So when you're answering that question, you're going to say that uh, you have got ears, therefore you are able to hear. You get the two marks, right? You mention the adaptation, then you mention the, the, the reason why it's an adaptation. So in this case, when you are mentioning that uh, the afferent arteriole is wider than the efferent arteriole, what is that? Uh, well, what is the adaptation then? This will allow the blood to be put under pressure, thereby allowing the what the filtration to be possible, or allowing the smaller dissolved substances to move into the Bowman's capsule. Right. So you need to always mention it the way I did here. If possible, just note this down in your book uh, exactly as it is. Only the smaller dissolved substances live through the slits. That's one mark, and then the larger proteins will remain. That's two marks. So you always have to explain in terms of cause and effect. Don't just mention the adaptation. Just, uh, just, don't just say the Bowman's capsule is cup-shaped. That doesn't give many marks. It's just go only going to give you one mark. What is the advantage of that cup-shaped? You see? So that's how you get the two marks in the adaptations. So bear in mind also that um, the process of glomerular filtration is a non-selective process. So when you say that the process is non-selective, it means that it does not select um, which type of dissolved substances will move into the Bowman's capsule. So remember that uh, here, the, the smaller dissolved substances are the ones that move from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. So they don't, it doesn't actually select which type of these um, substances it can be useful or it can be waste products but our aim is to take away waste products right so here also glucose and other important nutrients can also get inside so it's a non-selective process so in our next video we're going to be discussing what happens to that glucose because glucose is not a waste product and it is needed by the blood but then because it is small it will move into the Bowman's capsule so how can it be reabsorbed into the blood Stay tuned for the next video and thank you for watching.